In this episode, I'll show a few techniques to correct colors in photos with a concentration on interior real estate photography since that can be some of the most challenging, whether you're using flash, whether you're using HDR, since there's a number of different light sources within the interior that could cause problems, as well as when you're using flash, where colors can be cast off of all kinds of objects, no matter what you bounce your flash off of. No matter what technique you end up using, whether it's HDR or using flash of some sort, is that it will be more accurate using flash since that will give you a consistent color base, but still there can be color correction problems that need to be addressed. One of the biggest mistakes, no matter what, that a lot of photographers do is run to the white balance sliders, try adjusting those first. That's one of the biggest mistakes you can make since your color issues could be coming from something else. So let's take a look at these other techniques that you should try first and then take a look at your white balance sliders later. The first thing you need to do is make sure you select the proper treatment profile if you're using Lightroom, if you're using any software that's not made by your camera manufacturer, whether it's Capture One, Luminar, doesn't matter. Adobe's the same way. They can't decode your raw files to the exact same color profile that you set in camera since that's proprietary information. But you can get very, very close. Here's a finished product using the Flambient Blending. If we go over to the flash shots that I used, you can see here's one with me holding a light stand. And here's another one with me on the other side of the room. Key light, by the way, was always by the camera while I'm doing this two-sided composite, just like I show in my lighting guide. And we go over here and we can see that this looks like a pretty good color because it didn't have the standard default Adobe color. If you look up here, Adobe color is the default that gets applied to files when you bring them into Lightroom. We go in here and we can see that is very red. If we go back and forth on what I had set, you can see it looks more green. So what you wanna do is when Adobe Color shows up here, which it will by default, is you wanna select a different treatment profile and then save that into your pre-processing presets. So you select Adobe Color, which allows you to then select a different treatment profile. Go down to Browse. When you're browsing, there's a section called Camera Matching. Expand that. In there are profiles that should match what your camera offers. They get very, very close here with Adobe. In this case, I had used the standard profile in the Nikon Z5 that I was using here. So you can go down here and select standard. That gets us then very, very close. If we back out here and close that, we can see that if we go back and forth to where Adobe color was, camera standard was, there is a huge difference. Let's zoom back out here and then we can see this huge huge, huge difference there. Using Adobe Color, it's just awful. It's way too red, way too warm. But then Camera Standard, which is using that camera matching profile, it looks a lot better. So this is decoding the raw file with a much better color demosaicing process than what Adobe Color would do. So that's your first go-to. Save that then. Whatever you end up using for your treatment profile that looks very close to what you're using on the back of your camera so that while you're shooting, what you see is how it's gonna show up when you start editing. Now at this point, you could start messing around with some of the white balance sliders, but I'd really suggest taking a look at a few of these techniques first before you even think about doing that. My next recommended color correction technique is to perform this simple technique in Photoshop that will imitate an auto white balance algorithm, but give you much more control to the extent of the adjustment. So this is a bit of a complex image here. You can see that it does have some color issues. This is flambient blending along with the flames in the fireplace over here that I added. It's got a black over the TV. These are things that I show throughout other videos, show throughout my books, my real estate photography series. But here, getting to the core of what we're trying to look at, we started with a flash shot down here. This was a two-sided composite, similar to what I just showed, where I had the flash on the other side of the room. Then an ambient layer, which is set to luminosity blending mode, gives us that natural look where we want it. So then I add a darkened mode window pull that got us the views outside. And now we can see, especially when you start adding the window pull, which adds now that color from the outside, it gives a point of relativity, shows that this is exceptionally warm. So that's why sometimes until you get this blending done, you really can't tell what the color correction problems are. So let's just turn all these layers back on. Let's start 
adjusting this using this particular method. What we want to do is do something with our flash shots by finding a neutralization point. It's a very simple thing to do. So to show this best, let's now just go to our flash shots. Now, if you're using just one flash layer, this will be very simple. If it's a composite, like in this case, select both of them. Then you want to duplicate those and then just merge those together. If you just had a simple single flash shot, this would be it right here. If you had a single flash shot, you would want to duplicate this particular layer. In this case, since we have a duplicated layer, I'm going to leave it as is. What you do now is you want to find an average blur on it by simply going to filter, blur, and then average. What that does is now finds what should be the neutralized color, the neutralization point that you would base white balance off of, also known as the gray point. Now from here, we can find the gray point and adjust it by using a curves layer. So you go up to layer, select a new adjustment layer and a curves layer. Name it whatever you'd like. Use the middle dropper, which is the gray point dropper. You just select that and click anywhere in here and there's our adjustment. And you can see that it now adjusted the reds on a curved manner and the blues in a curved manner. Different from if you were just to adjust the white balance sliders. Now turn off that color layer. You don't need it any longer. If we turn off and on the curves layer, we can see that there's now correction. So let's turn on our other layers here. You can see now this looks a lot better. So this is with it on, this is with it off. Now, if that adjustment went too far, all you need to do is just change the opacity of that layer. Just lower that opacity. If you feel that it really cooled it off too much or made the color correction go just a little too far, I'll put that back up to 100%. Now there's still other things that I would do to this, for instance, desaturating some of the ceiling, taking out maybe, for instance, some of this ambient light that's over, the, over here, over the dining room. That was just a little too much right there. And there might be a little bit of leftover uh, stuff color over here from some of the shadows. But when we were all done with this one, it looked like this. The next method is very similar to this. We're going to use the same uh, image here as an example, but what we're going to do is get rid of our curves layer and we're going to get rid of that color layer that we made. So now we're back to our flash shots and do the same thing again. If you made a composite, you would duplicate those layers and then you would merge them together. So just bringing that together into one. If this was just your single flash layer, just like before, you'd want to duplicate this because we're going to make some changes to this and we want to maintain our original layer. So since we have our original layers as a composite, we don't have to worry about that. Anyways, let's take this layer now and make our adjustment. It's very simple. It's finding a neutralization point in a different way by going up to the image menu, go to adjustments and then select match color. In here, all that you need to do is click this neutralization or neutralize checkbox. What that does is that found colors that seem to be casted and then neutralize them. Let's click that on and off and see some of the difference. You can then adjust the intensity of it, how much luminance is applied to it and how that would fade into there. That's all fine, but we can do that with also changing the layer opacity. Just click OK. If this neutralized too much, there's two things you can do. One, you can always change the opacity of the layer to change the neutralization strength. The other thing you can do is add a layer mask. I'll just go to layer mask reveal all. And if I felt this neutralized too much of the floor, for instance, I could take an eraser tool and I could erase the neutralization from the floor and some of the wood. If it neutralized too much around the fireplace, the same way. What this did though is similar to the last example where we found the neutralization point with an average blur is that we're doing this below the other color layers. In other words, we're doing this below the window pole. We're doing this below the flames that we're adding. So this is just affecting the color problems that we had in the flash shots. And that'll be important as we move on into the next example. An oldie but a goodie is to use a color balance layer in Photoshop. It will give you much more control than white balance slider since it has more control in it. Let's take a look at that. Here we can see in this example, this is another flambient shot where I did once again, my standard two-sided composite where I've got another flash over here. That's me doing it while a key light stayed near camera. 
I added then my ambient layer in luminosity mode, just to add a little bit of luminance. If I added all of it, that living room would be too dark. That's one reason of using flash and distributing it. You get a lot more control where it should be. Glare up here was taken care of with the darkened mode window pull, just like I show in the interiors book. So anyways, here we can take a color balance layer, correct most of this very easily in real time. And once again, we want to work above our flash layer. So here what we'll do is we'll go to layer, we'll go to new adjustment layer and select color balance. So you can see that the color balance layer has three sliders, not two. So typically we're used to the one on the bottom here where we can go from blue to yellow, which is basically cool to warm, or we go from a magenta to a green tint. But here we also have red and cyan. And if we take a look in this image, there is a lot of red. So what we can do is just eliminate some of the red by moving down toward the cyan range. The cyan range. And we can see that that immediately cooled off a lot. Turn this off and on. We can see there's a big difference in the color temperature. So we can do just a little bit more here by cooling off some of the warm tones. And if we did feel that there was some magenta in here, we could move it into the greens here. We really don't need to move it much, if at all. And of course, then we can control it very even more up here with the, moving those reds out. And this was, by the way, in just the midtones. You could say that, you know, in the shadows, we've got some other issues. So the shadows, in this case, maybe they were a little too warm. You just want to adjust the shadows. So you can adjust those down. If then you found that the highlights were a little bit they weren't warm enough, they were too cool, you could warm up the highlights. And that immediately then starts warming up, for instance, some of this area on the floor. So this gives us a lot of flexibility for the different parts of the tonal range, and then also the color balance in there that goes far beyond just using standard white balance sliders. Now we still might want to desaturate the ceiling here, but when this was all said and done, it looked like this. So remember, don't run to the white balance sliders first. Make sure that you're properly decoding that raw file with the proper treatment profile. Also make sure then that the color casts aren't coming from something else that one of these techniques can then resolve. You'll have more flexibility if you do use a color balance layer. But of course, then when all else fails, white balance is obviously a very important issue when it comes to any type of photography. And it can be thrown far off if you're doing anything that's casting colors like doing interior real estate photography. Photography.